Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining today for today's webinar on uh, crafting product strategy and roadmap for a product. Uh, just a quick introduction for about myself. Uh, I'm Saurav Sharma, I'm a senior product manager currently at Amazon. Uh, before that, I've held uh, product lead roles at TerraMonkey, uh, eBay, and before that, you know, I was into more of a uh, business consulting. Uh, I've done my MBA from Boot School of Business in Chicago. Um, yeah, and currently I live in Toronto, Canada. Okay, uh, with that, let's just jump right in. Okay, so here's what our agenda looks like for today. So we're gonna talk about, you know, what is product vision, strategy, you know, how do you think about product roadmaps, you know, what are the different kinds of roadmaps that, you know, you can make, and, you know, what are some of the common pitfalls to avoid, uh, you know, in product roadmaps. Okay, so with that, let's just jump right in. Um, I'm gonna just, you know, uh, have you keep this picture in mind as we progress through this uh, webinar? Uh, like vision, uh, when you think about for products is at the right top, you can think of this like a pyramid. Uh, strategy is the kind of like the, the second step. And then finally, you know, once you have defined your vision and strategy, and then, you know, you finally, you know, you come up with a, a product roadmap, right? Uh, just keep this picture in mind and, you know, as we are uh, through this thing in the end, we'll see how, we, you know, we end up filling this and, you know, how, you know, we can get some tangible, um, you know, uh, steps uh, in each of these uh, kind of uh, vision strategy and roadmap. Okay, uh, let's go right in. Okay, so what's a product vision and, you know, like why uh, it's kind of like important, uh, right? So... As you know, like, you know, like it's very important that, you know, you have a product vision, which is like an aspirational state of the product, right? That you want to achieve in the future for your users. Um, ideally, your product vision should be between uh, two to four years um, because, and, and the reason being that if you keep it like too short, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's not likely that you're going to achieve that, right? I mean, and if you keep it like too broad, like more than, five to seven years and it becomes like a too big of a time frame for that. So, you know, like it's a sweet spot is about two to four years. That's what you should keep your vision for. And and then, you know, as you come up with your vision and you, you progress towards, you know, your, your product vision, um, you know, you can see like, you know, whether you're reaching that vision or not, right? Um, it's very important to keep in mind a few of the things, uh, you know, the characteristics that I mentioned here for a good product vision, right? Uh, it's very, uh, so, so first things, um, you know, for the product vision, uh, you know, it should be inspiring, right? It should inspire your team members and stakeholders alike so that, you know, you're, you're aligned towards making a product a success, right? If there's like the product vision is not inspiring, um, you know, it's hard for teams to kind of like, you know, collaborate and align towards that uh, product vision, right? Um, second thing, it should be ambitious. You know, you should have uh, it should not be something, you know, which you can achieve immediately within six year, six months or so, right? So it should be like a big, hairy and audacious goal, right? That you want to achieve for the product. Um, second, it should not only be like, you know, your product manager or product leader, your vision, right? It should be a shared vision that it can unite people, right? It's very important for a product vision to be that, right? You don't want to have a product vision which you only understand, you know, and nobody else kind of like understands what that vision is about. Um, Next, I would say it should be opinionated, right? I mean, you don't want your product vision to be general, right? I mean, you want to, sh you know, share a specific point of view about the product, you know, which you want, right? Your product to be in the future, right? So it definitely requires a specific point of view. And last but not the least, it should be user centric because, you know, you want to focus on the benefit that you're going to provide to the users, right? And uh, that's, yeah, it should be a part of the product vision as well, right? Uh, okay, uh, let's look at, you know, what is now product strategy, right? Having, if that is product vision, uh, what does product strategy mean, right? And, you know, how do we go about, you know, defining its key components, right? So product strategy, you know, describes the choices that you're going to take uh, to achieve that product vision, right? Um, and I'm going to, like, uh, pause here in a minute to, you know, say, like, why it's important that after you have a product vision to have a sound product strategy. Um, 
the you know the reality of the situation is that um, you know like any the new product launches in bigger companies or startups alike you know they have a very high rate of failing you know it can vary anywhere from 40 to 50 percent and goes up to anywhere to 80 percent depending on the type of the industry and you know size of the company right so there is like a very high percentage of this new product failures which exist today right um so uh and majority of those happen because of not having a sound product strategy in place um because it might be either under undercooked you know if we haven't figured out you know what's the right uh, like all the components for their product uh before we start to you know work on that uh or it could be that you know like we you know just thought about you know like the business we didn't think about the users at all right so it could be like variety of different reasons but not having a sound product strategy is is the cause for failure for most of the uh, new product launches right so it's very important that you know we, you know we take time to kind of frame a good product strategy before we get started you know on the product roadmap side of things right um Secondly, I would say like the product strategy should be aligned with the mission of the company and help advance that, right? Um, so what, I, what do I mean by that? Say, for example, say, you know, like Facebook's mission is to bring people around the world closer together and help build communities, right? So I'm say if I'm proposing uh, Facebook events, you know, anything that I set a vision for Facebook events should align with Facebook's overall mission, which is to bring people closer together and help build communities. Uh, if I propose something which is not aligned with that mission, um, you know, chances are it will be difficult to kind of justify why are we even thinking about that product uh, vision of, or even thinking about, you know, having a product in place like that, right? So it's very important that the, you know, like the, your product visioning strategy should be aligned with, uh, you know, your company's uh, overall mission and help advance that. Uh, okay. And I've said that. Uh, now let's look at some of the key components, right? Of a good product strategy. You should have a good product strategy. You should have, you know, your key value propositions. You know, like what is the benefit? Like, you know, why why should somebody buy your product, uh, right? Um, who is your customer? Uh, who are you targeting? And you know, what problems are we solving? Um, how big is the market? Like, so ideally, you want uh, your product to be in a market, you know, which has like less competition and there's like a lot of white space area, right? So, and typically, you know, you would also want the market to be big enough so that, you, you know, you can expand in the future. Um, next thing would be like, you know, you need to look at your competitors. Uh, just like I was mentioning in the market side, you know, you should look at like, whom are you competing against? Who are the existing players in this market, right? What are some things you can do which are, which are better than your competitors, right? Because ultimately, if you want your product to succeed, you should be doing something which is different and which the customers will want to buy your product for, right? Um, so that is all good, right? I mean, but some of the things that we always miss during product, um, you know, strategy, uh, and we kind of like overlook that is like, how are you going to reach those customers? Like the whole go-to-market strategy for that, right? You can build the best product possible that you want, right? But if you don't have a good way of like uh, marketing and kind of like distributing your product, you know, chances are that it's not going to be successful, right? So it's very important you, that you think about your go-to-market, you know, at while you're defining your, you know, your product strategy. Um, the last but not the least, um, you know, as you, you know, there should be something, you know, what when you want to do this, you know, it should be aligned with your, you know, what your business goals and priorities are, right? Um, if your business goal and priority is about like improving customer NPS, and you know, you're coming up with you know, new product ideas uh, for say, you know, revenue growth uh, or, or, you know, more customer acquisition. You know, all of those are like good, uh, but like if your business is totally focused on say customer NPS and improving that, uh, chances are that if you come up with a new product idea uh, or a vision and strategy, which is aligned towards NPS, uh, chances are that you're gonna get buy-in for that, right? So it's very important to keep in mind that, you know, what is in it for the business? Like, you know, you want to make sure that your product strategy is aligned with, you know, your business priorities and goals as well. Okay, uh, let's keep moving. Um, let's take a quick example. Um, this is something which I did while I was at eBay and I was doing a, kind of like a, uh, envisioning a new product for one of the um, eBay companies at the time, PayPal. 
uh, and this was for the Indian market. Um, I will not go like too much into detail, but this kind of like gives you um, uh, kind of like a good idea of like what we are talking about from product vision and product uh, strategy perspective that how that you know comes together. Uh, for example, you know like this product vision, right? So we PayPal Recur uh, would be the one-stop shop for handling the subscription business in India for small, all small to medium merchants who want to handle subscription payments securely and at an affordable price, right? So that's a pretty, um, you know, like if you, if even if like it's PayPal and it's coming up with a new product, it's a pretty bold vision to have that you want it to be the one-stop shop for all small to medium merchants, right? Who want to handle subscription payments. Um, this is something which is bold, which is, you know, something which is, you know, kind of inspiring as well that, you know, you want it to be the two-go product uh, for SMBs uh, in India. And it's also something which is can't be like, immediately achieved, right? I mean, this will require some work to be done before you know you can realize that vision. And it also requires a lot of, you know, like, this is just defining at a very high level. It's also like, kind of like BHAG that, that we talked about, right? It's, it's like a big, hairy and audacious goal, right? Uh, it requires a lot of other components. Um, so as part of that, you know, when you want to define the product strategy, uh, like make no mistake that you have to, you know, spend a lot of time before you can, you know, arrive at your target customer, or market size, or your competitive research, right? You have to like you have to do a lot of user research, right? You have to do a lot of surveying of your target customers, talk to them, you know, figure out what's their pain point, right? And and it requires a lot of work before you know you can start uh, kind of like filling up um, this product strategy different areas, right? Uh, it might also require you to you know uh, even partner with some kind of um, you know. Um, uh, companies that kind of help you size up the market and, and so forth, right? It might also help you to, you know, require you to, you know, kind of figure out what your go-to-market will be. Do, is your business currently, you know, set up to have that kind of go-to-market function or not, right? Um, so, you know, this is just to kind of like give you a flavor that, you know, this is how things come together uh, when you're thinking about a new product and, you know, like, and once you have done the right kind of research, you know, you can start to kind of fill up uh, all those key components that are required for you to A, propose it, and then, you know, kind of get alignment and approval for, for these kind of new products, right? Um, you know, as I was saying in the previous slide, you know, it's, when you come up with a new product, it's also important that, you know, you, you know, come up with some kind of a, um, you know, kind of a business model canvas, uh, like I show here. Um, this is just to align like, you know, how 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 is your product supposed to you know work uh, you know not only from the problem and solution value proposition but also like from market advantages or you know your different market segments or uh, what is going to be a cost structure right you know like yeah there's some investment needed to develop this product uh, for sure uh, but like how is how is it going to make you know revenue like or money for this right so in this case you know if our, we're going to charge like PayPal checkout plus like we're going to charge a percentage fees. Uh, on each transaction, you know, that's how we're going to make money on, on this one. Uh, whether, you, you know, so we, it's a flat percentage rate for each recurring transaction. That's how, you know, this product is supposed to, PayPal record is supposed to make money. Um, and it's also important to keep in mind that, you know, what problem it is solving and what is the value proposition, as you kind of see here, that PayPal record is kind of like providing. Um, and we also see here, like, you know, how are we gonna reach those SMBs, right? So we're gonna use like email marketing to reach those SMBs. We can also do like content marketing on SMB business account pages. We can also do like SEO marketing to reach those target customers once we have this product in place. Um, you know, like what are some of the key metrics that we're gonna to use to track this, right? Um, so we will list some metrics here and that uh, that will kind of like also depend on what state of the, the product is, but we are going to look at cost per acquisition. You know, what is the lifetime value? You know, what is the average revenue per user? Uh, what is the monthly recurring revenue, right? How, what is the churn rate? How often do the SMBs churn, you know, once they're subscribed to this PayPal record? Uh, so, I mean, this kind of gives an overall thing that, you know, this, this product idea or the product strategy and the vision that we talked about, this is like grounded in some solid uh, work that has been put forward, right? Okay, um, let's move on. Let's move on to now this product roadmap, right? Uh, this, if you remember the pyramid that we talked about, uh, this is kind of like the, the last piece of it, right? Um, so what exactly is product roadmap, right? So a product roadmap is a strategic document uh, to accomplish vital tasks 
uh, for the success of any product, right? Um, so it, it kind of like describes how are you gonna meet the key milestones to realize your product strategy and vision. So now in, you have just you have you have defined your product vision. You have defined what your strategy is. Like you know how are you gonna like what is like those the key components of the product strategy. Now the main question is like how are you gonna reach that vision and strategy? Like what do you describe? So that's where kind of like the product roadmap comes in. Uh, a good way to put it is like if your product strategy and vision are about defining why and what. Product roadmaps are all about defining how and when. Now it's like we are getting into like the more like details of it. Like, okay, you define your vision, you define your strategy. Now, how are we going to achieve that? Like, and when, right? That's where the product roadmaps come in. Okay. Um, so, um, <laughs> product roadmaps actually are a pretty, um, you know, this is kind of like the point of contention in like many companies. Um, because you know, like all comp different companies have different ways how to define this, uh, and you know, and and there's like very like there's like a lot of wasteful uh, aspect of product roadmaps as well. In the sense that you know, if you're not, you're not defining it correctly, it can lead to a lot of you know wastage of time, resources, and effort as well. So it's very important to you know kind of create that right uh, and, and and kind of like you know follow some of the steps that I highlight here. So, so if you want to achieve an optimal product roadmap. Uh, and you know, in terms of like how often should you do that? Uh, you know, like product roadmap exercises kind of like vary from company to company. You know, like some companies might do it once a year, some might do like every six months, or some might even do it you know, every quarter. It kind of like varies uh, depending on your size of the company, uh, the culture of the company, and like, you know, how often do they think about this product roadmaps, uh, right? For example, like some startups might do it quarterly because you know they are in the early stages and they have to you know adapt quickly to what's happening in the for the business. Some of the bigger companies they might do like yearly or you know semi annually uh, for the product roadmap because just because they have a more mature market and they you know need uh, don't need to like take uh, steps to revise the product roadmap that often. Um, Okay, so let's. So here is like you know what are the key things that you should keep in mind, and you should also keep in mind that this product roadmap is an iterative exercise or it's an iterative process. It's not like you know you just do it one time and you're done, right? Uh, so the steps that I highlight here, these might have to be repeated at some uh, time or form, you know, depending on how you're progressing. So don't think that it's just like you know you just follow it once and you're kind of like done. So it's kind of like an iterative process and it requires some time and effort. And collaboration between stakeholders and executives and teams to kind of like get this right. Um, so first is like you know you need to understand the business goals and priorities for the year. Like you know what are the business goals and priorities? To the other point which I mentioned that you're even your what you're proposing for your product in terms of vision and strategy that should even align with this because then it helps you to kind of align what you want to do with the business goals and priorities for the year. Um, there should be, you know, work, some work done in terms of identifying the problems that can be solved, right? There are different ways to get that, uh, you know, problems. Like you can use product users' data, customer feedback, competitive analysis, tech debt. There's like a lot of other you know, different ways how you can, you know, find, you know, what you need needs to be part of the product uh, roadmap. Um, important thing, like you should align with your internal teams and stakeholders. You know, it's uh, it's one thing to define product vision and strategy, but it's it's equally important to kind of like socialize that with your internal teams and stakeholders to make sure that everyone has a shared vision, right? Uh, because if you don't have a shared vision uh, or understanding of the product roadmap, uh, it'll be difficult, you know, for teams to get aligned uh, with this product roadmap. And finally, to kind of like even you know convince executives that this is a like a good idea for a product roadmap for us to kind of like pursue. Um, it's important to also define the success metrics of initiatives on the roadmaps and map them to business goals. Like this is the most important thing that you know you should define any things that you put on the roadmap. Like what is, how are you gonna make how is what are the some of the key success metrics and how does that map to the business goals? Right, that's a very important step. Um, prioritization, like there could be like a lot of other things, a lot of things that you want to may want to put in the product roadmap, but you know, using some kind of framework to how you're going to prioritize, whether it's rise or value and effort or some other framework is also important because uh, there is only like limited capacity in terms of tech resources and time 
uh, and even product managers and designers that you can you can have, right? So it's very important to kind of like define what are the initiatives that give you the you know the most value uh, for for your uh, you know kind of for the resources that you have, right? And the time that you have. Um, I mean, the next one is not a surprise. Getting alignment on the roadmap with executives and stakeholders. I mean, most people would think that that's a you know that's given, but it's not. <laughs> if you have done this exercise, uh, you will realize that it's you know that that step is 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 not easy as it seems. And then you know, finally, you should like share this, finalize the roadmap and share because you know this roadmap is is not like a, a you know one-time document as I was saying. You know things can change so it should be a living document and you should keep it in a way that it's shareable and and, and it's you know it's like everyone has the latest uh, picture of that so it's very important to do that as well okay um so i'm just gonna quickly look at you know what are the different kind of uh, product roadmaps that are that you know that that kind of like exist um so i've just highlighted the one the key ones that i've kind of seen um you know different companies have so you can have like uh, project-based roadmaps, right? Uh, which are like, I think these are like least flexible because you tie your projects to certain quarters and then, you know, you're kind of like tying yourself up that, you know, you have to achieve that by the time. Um, then you have like this theme-based roadmaps, um, which are that which are improvement or project-based roadmaps. But you, what you're doing here is essentially you're defining like key themes and goals and not exact uh, projects that you want to deliver by certain quarters, right? So you are kind of like in this case free to choose what kind of projects that you want under those themes to achieve those business goals. Um, I, I think the last one is something you know which is um, you know which will require some work from the company side to get there. Like not all companies would be able to directly go there, uh, especially if they have like haven't reached even like theme based roadmap. So last one I would say is the most flexible, but it also requires a lot of work and you know maturity on the part of the the company and the teams to kind of like uh, reach there. Uh, so that's about most to be about like the outcome focused roadmaps, the outcome based roadmaps. Um, we are we are just defining what are the outcomes we want to achieve and you know what we are doing now, next, and future to kind of like achieve that, right? And we're gonna see some examples to, to kind of like solidify these concepts as well. So this is just an example of you know what a typical project-based roadmap will look like, right? So you have your typical um, you know like your, your strategies defined for your product that you know whether it's like personalization, uh, whether it's original content, watching experience, interactive games and stories. Like so, these are kind of like your in, in Netflix case, you know your value propositions uh, for the strategy, and like you know what and what are you doing to kind of achieve that, right? So for example, for personalization, we're gonna have a Moodle algorithm test or, uh, or like a voice recognition uh, kind of like um, um, a product that you're you know uh, working feature that you're working towards or a language detection feature, right? So these are kind of like uh, some projects which are aligned, uh, you know, for for that personalization uh, uh, component, right? Um, so as as I was saying, like you know the the drawback with this one, uh, in my experience, is that you know like so what happens, for example, if the Moodle algorithm test doesn't work in Q1 or you know it kind of overshoots into Q2, right? Then you know you have a ripple effect and you know things can start to fall pretty like um, it can have a ripple effect and then you know you won't know like you know what you're going to achieve under personalization aspect uh, for your product strategy right so you know that's the kind of like downside that you know you're like kind of like tying yourself up in all these and it, once you don't achieve or don't you know achieve one of these projects in a quarter then it has a ripple effect and then you have to kind of like explain you know what's happening to all your stakeholders and executives right so that's why you know I wouldn't suggest um, you know like having such kind of like uh, roadmaps. Uh, you know, especially you know if the you, you can you know come up with more advanced like the theme based or the outcome oriented uh, product roadmaps. Um, yeah. Um, so theme based is definitely and kind of like I would say is an improvement, definite improvement over quarter ones because. What you're defining is, you know, loosely the themes um, that you want to achieve over certain quarters, and you know, and you're kind of like loosely tying it. You know, as, as you see here, like you know, this is can start from Q1 and can go up to mid of Q2, right? And then the other one theme, we have like you know, starting in mid Q2 and go up to you know, towards the end of Q3. It doesn't have like 
a pretty solid defined date and there you see there is some kind of room wiggle room as well and the key thing is that you know you see here that the initiatives under it you know like those are something you know which are like kind of like flexible so you can for example for user growth you can come up with a new website you can come up with pricing review or you can add something else right so those are kind of like something which is you know up to the teams to decide how best to you know uh, you, how, like depending on for the team user growth what are the you know kind of the metrics and how does it tie to the business goal that you plan to achieve for that you know the you know the projects that you want to come up under it those are pretty flexible so that kind of gives the team flexibility to try different things and see like how are you going to meet uh, you know the objectives the goals and objectives under user growth right uh, so that's kind of like the different a difference from a typical project based um, product product roadmaps um so same thing like you know when you're presenting this like you know when you're presenting your teams you can you know look at all those different uh you know kind of like the projects that you want to run under this to achieve those goals but maybe when you're presenting to executives you just present the high level teams that you have and what are the goals that you want to achieve uh you know as part of this for the business right you don't have to like go into all the details yet you know if the things are not finalized yet right so that's the like, kind of like the flexibility that you get with this team based product roadmaps um let's look at outcome based right so outcome based uh, is is i would say the most flexible one because so what you see here is for netflix right so you're defined on, on this side you know the outcomes that you want to achieve and you know what are the kind of the indicators for that right and then what do you do for that like what are you doing now next and consider that is something for you to kind of like decide and you see here there's like no exact time frame at, attached to it right i mean the ones which are in now are the most you would say uh, concrete uh, you know and when when you are complete with this the next and the consider you know you can start to put like some more you know like time frame and structure around those right but at this point with this one you know the most certain are the ones which are in now and the next and consider are something which are kind of like flexible and you can like change based on how things are progressing right so that's the kind of like the flexibility that you get with this and what you are focusing here is like the outcomes right like for example you want to have the content i can get anywhere else right if this is what we want to achieve you know what are you going to do that uh, to achieve this right so for example now you are starting a cold start merchandising test or next we can do a weekly release test so these are the things that we want to do to achieve this kind of outcome right so that's where this roadmap is pretty flexible and it kind of allows for you know more, like more innovation and more flexibility as well in terms of you know what uh, product engineering teams and design teams can achieve okay um so lastly you know i, I just want you guys to uh leave with some of the pitfalls that can happen in while building this product roadmaps right so one is you know there's a like lot lo lot of like a lo list but i would just highlight the main ones right not communicating your product strategy and vision is definitely something you know which you want to watch out against you don't want to create your strategy and vision in silo um we already talked about thinking roadmap not as a list of features but more as like themes or outcome focused um I mean, the third one is self-explanatory. It's not a static document, but it's more of a living document. So things change. You know, everyone should be able to see how the product roadmap is and where does it stand today. It should not live in some PowerPoint shared in some uh, you know drive where like nobody goes. It should be more of a you know shareable document where you know things can be updated uh, mostly in real time. You know, there are some. uh like product road, uh, like product board or or some other uh, companies which kind of make it pretty easy to kind of like share this document and have a kind of like um ongoing discussion by seeing the latest picture of it so that's something to keep in mind um not aligning with stake stakeholders and executives i mean it's like kind of like a typical way how you can derail a product road map uh, if you don't have alignment um right goals for as part of the product road map So if you, it's good to define teams and outcomes, but if you don't have like, what are you going to achieve with those? Like, what goals, uh, business goals, are you tying the, those to? Then you know, like that makes the product roadmap not serve its purpose, because you want to make sure that what are you defining on your roadmap uh, is tied to some kind of business goals that you want to achieve uh, as a company, right? Um, and also, you know, last but not least, you should also mention the assumptions and constraints that you have for the product roadmap. You know, you know, whatever that those might be, it might be like. you know whether you have constraints on resources you have made some assumptions on 
okay, whatever it is, like you know, like market sizing, you know, customer, target customer, whatever it is, you should just make sure that everyone is on the same page with that. Okay, uh, so as I said, uh, we started on with this pyramid, and I'm gonna now bring you guys back to this expanded product strategy pyramid of how the things that we talked about, how those shape up, right? So you see here, the vision has purpose and benefit. Uh, strategy, you know, we talked about the key components, so you start to add those things here, and then you have roadmap, uh, which was the last, right? So you, you start to kind of see like how this pyramids, you know, start to fill up. And then closely tied to, tied to that are the, you know, the OKRs, like the high level objectives, and, you know, some team based objectives that we want, we saw in the product roadmap that you want to kind of like, uh, you know, focus towards, especially in your product roadmapping exercise. Okay, uh, that's about it. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it was great to have you, and we'll chat again with you later at a future webinar. Take care. Bye.